So I'm out here drive cycling in a 99 Toyota Camry. I figured it was a good opportunity to talk about drive cycles and um, OBD2 monitors. So we just did an oxygen sensor on this car and um, I'm using the OBD2 scanner um, OTC3109 which I find to be an excellent scanner for drive cycles. The biggest reason being that it's fast. It's fast and easy to hook up. I have a bunch of scanners and well, I have a couple scanners. I'm actually going to be getting a new one soon. And I'll do a video on scanners. But um, I don't like using the bigger scanners for drive cycles because they take a little bit of time to, to, to connect to the car. Where pretty much this OTC 3109, which I bought a while ago, I think it was like 100 bucks is um, faster on most cars. You just hook it up and it's plug and play. Every once in a while, maybe 30, 35% of the cars, it asks you a couple of questions. But most of the time, especially on the older cars, you just plug it in and that's, that's it. So my other scanners, they go through a bunch of menus, options to, uh, to hook into the computer system because they do more. This uh, OTC 3109 basically does live data, clears code, stuff like that. It's limited to what it would do. Obviously, if you spend $100 on a scanner, it's not going to do that much. Scanners usually run over 1000 sometimes 5 to 10 depending on what you're going to buy. But anyway, in doing a drive cycle, there's a couple things that are important. First of all, to try to get the car, once you're on the highway, to stay at 60 miles an hour. And don't get into an accident over this. I mean, usually most drive cycles are six, maybe five to seven minutes holding that speed. I've basically already done this in like an eight mile area. So my monitors are up, the ones that I wanted to set for this uh, oxygen sensor. And, um, the light didn't trip so we're cool on this this was a common problem on Toyotas but um, the important thing I think is to, to when you're doing a dry cycle hook your monitor up start the car up and then go don't start it a couple times or puts around it takes me maybe a minute or two minutes to get on the highway I go through various steps I can't really get into all of that, but sometimes it's just pot luck that you get monitors to trip. Um, but I usually try to have the engine decelerate a couple times during the process, and I'll hold it five to seven minutes at 60 miles an hour. And if you have good oxygen sensors in the car, it's going to it's going to set. It's the older O2 sensors that usually give you a lot of problems and it could take days and days, you know, if at all, that a computer sets. Um, we've had cars that we've driven 500 miles and in Pennsylvania we had to get authorization in order to get these cars through. Um, it just, you know, it's just a process that you get experience in but for the most part, with cars that are in good shape, it's just a matter of driving on the road safely, of course, and, um, and holding your speed. And uh, then you might have to go back and forth with, uh, with your, with your uh, scanner in order for it to re-register the new monitors, the monitors that are being set. Sometimes while you're driving, if the scanner's in a set position like this, you're going to have to kind of go back and re-enter IM monitors in order to get the scanner to come up to say if it actually, you know, was set. So um, that's uh, pretty much it on the tips for uh, drive cycles for now. Um, 
you're going to run in the cars if you ever do a Mercedes and stuff like that. We have various systems that are really hard to set, but um, for the most part, if the computer sound and the system is operating properly, and you can see that on your live data, which most scanners have, um, it should set. I, we, we, what we usually do is go on a 15 mile straight run, and then when I come down, sometimes I do a couple acceleration, decelerations, uh, let the car coast, and that's uh, pretty much, you know, blindly, without a, um, an actual manual, how to get these, um, these parameters set. But I can warn you that sometimes you'll follow the book to the letter and the car won't, the monitors won't all come up. And that's just the way it works with, uh, with drive cycles. Thanks for watching. So just trying to get this monitor in a position where I can move it around uh, the scanner. Um, on EVAP systems, I'm I'm going to reset the monitors here so we can get we can get live information. Um, so it'll take a couple seconds for it to come back up. And here we go. So what you have here is this was after maybe 16 minutes uh, amazingly absolutely amazingly the evap system monitor came up I have no idea how that happened uh, my guess is on a 99 car they weren't as strict and I just don't remember because it was 20 years ago but normally on an evap system it's going to take you two or three cycles in order to get the EVAP monitor up. That's why I wanted to talk about it separately. Um, you can have a lot of problems with EVAP and um, oxygen sensor heater circuit um, coming up. So I just want to say a couple more things about this OTC 3109 and drive cycles and setups and all. This Jeep, which just happens to be mine, um, if you look on the oxygen sensor um, on uh, bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two, you'll see the movement on one and the slower movement on two. Now, that's normal, and this has a new cat and new oxygen sensors and this is pretty much the best that you might ever see. Actually, this thing has no injectors in it. I just put them in. But to give you an idea of what it looks like, and this drive cycle, by the way, this OTC 3109, when you're looking right here on this live data, it's really fast. And I have a launch, which was way more expensive than this. And because, I guess, of the computer clutter, of it does, has so many options in it or whatever uh, I'm sure it's a faster processor it doesn't move as fast even on the identical car so um, again a little shout out to this OTC unit for being cheap and pretty good for this kind of purpose but um, just to read this live data here and to see the pretty much picture perfect of course as like I said everything's new but to see the way this runs gives you an indication these monitors set so fast I don't think I was driving on the highway for like two three minutes and they came up right away so um, you will have a problem with your parameters when you got an oxygen sensor that's uh, 150,000 miles old and probably should have been changed anyway but um, this is what your live data would look like if you're setting up for an easier you know unless it's just a computer in the car that's got a million parameters to uh, to bring the monitor up but um, that's basically it I got cut out on my other video the point of that was evap monitors are sometimes really hard to set and don't forget that this doesn't have it <laughs> but on a um, on a lot of your later model cars, you're going to need 
I think it's half a tank. I always put like over half a tank of gas in to make sure that if everything's not reading perfect, that there's enough gas in there. You see, at some of the monitors, there's like a sequence of events that has to take place, and one of them is that there has to be enough gas in the car. So um, that's pretty much it on monitors. Um, thanks for watching.